Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the channel. It is your boy Zell here, and we are back again with some more history. Another classroom education, some would say. No, no one says that. No one says that at all. Um, but yes, as you may remember in our last history lesson, our last class lesson, our natural history channel told us very much everything there was to know about the ins and outs of the Devil Joe, which led us to taking it out in Monster Hunter World. Great class, gotta give it 10 out of 10. However, we got a substitute. Well, I would. Uh, today, the head teacher is gonna give us a little class. Okay, this is the Monster Hunter Lore Basil Geese video by Team Darkseid. Now, I am a huge fan of Team Darkseid. You'll remember I reacted to, it was either the 10th anniversary or, no, it wasn't even an anniversary, was it? It was just a Monster Hunter like, I think mostly World and Iceborne size comparison, which was very well done. They did incredible in that video. I mean, I've never seen such good detail. I would love to know how to edit like that. It was great. Um, which was a pretty popular video. Pretty popular video. I haven't seen it, you say. It's there. Very good. But yes, today, Team Darkseid is going to be our teacher. We're going to listen to what they have to say in regards to the Basil Geese. Now, the Basil Geese, obviously, we have faced it down in Monster Hunter World. It's such a pain. I cannot think of any monster more annoying than the Basil Geese. The first couple of times I saw it was very fun, thrilling, exciting, and scary. Now it is the biggest inconvenience... that can come into my hunts bar devil joe and i don't actually know which one's more annoying out of the two because devil joe just kind of repositions you the basil goose just annoys you but hey who knows who knows anyway let's get straight into this class has started um i'm looking forward to this i haven't seen this by the way so this could be very fun let's go our hunts with an explosive aerial assault. <laughs> because of Basil's rather violent entrances into our hunts, its music and its air raid siren roar often trigger a hunter's instant dung pod. <laughs> What's up guys, Chris here and welcome to another very exciting ah. video. Just as this B-52 bomber showers us with explosives, in a similar fashion our sponsor showers us with support and we greatly oh. appreciate them. This video is brought to you by the Rich Wallet. It's light, sleek, and industrial design. I have one of those. For everyone who doesn't have I actually have that. In their pocket. It holds up to no, I do. Cards, Hold on. Plus room for cash. Oh, oh. Each wallet. Where is it? Look. See? I have it. Legit. Look. I think it's the exact same one. I bought this years ago. Wow. I didn't actually know they sponsored team dark side i mean i didn't buy it years ago i bought it because of this particular video about beetle geese which has two significant meanings the first is a yeah. star within the constellation of orion since beetle geese is such a massive star it has a very short lifetime it is suspected to explode with a supernova relatively soon the second meaning is that the name Beto Geese was used for a nuclear weapons test in France in 1966. So the name for a nuclear weapon and a dying star that's due to go supernova at some point. I think. So at some point, right? If I had, it's not already. Okay, it's very cool. So it's named after total destruction in any form, nuclear weapons or a supernova. Because of that, the guild was curious to discover the origins of the monster. Upon further research, it was discovered that Basil's main form of transportation mm. isn't the same type of flying that other monsters Great video. to move between areas. It is specifically low altitude gliding. This led the guild to believe that Basil geese are actually born in areas of high elevation, mm. such as the highest peaks in the Eldest Recess. It is from regions like this that Basil Geese would be able to survey almost the entirety of the new world and glide efficiently to get to its destination and fight its prey. The guild also believes the Elder's Recess is Basil's home territory due to one peculiar behavior. 
When observing it in the Elder's Recess, the guild noticed instances where Basil rubs its blasting scales along the ground, presumably marking its territory. The monster only performs this act in the Elder's Recess uh -huh. and nowhere else. That's interesting. In an excerpt from the book called Theories of the New World Ecology, it is stated that Basilgees started appearing in other regions of the New World after the Elder Crossing drastically altered the ecology of said regions. This is because the Basilgees are trying to take control from the apex monsters of each region to make these territories their own. Basilgees essentially so they're highly territorial. all the first main regions of the New World as its own territory, and it will defend them with immeasurable stubbornness. If a Basilgees spots an intruder, it will immediately attack only to stop when its prey's life has ended or if it has been chased out of the area. Basilgees' hostility towards other monsters have led it to have territorial conflict with another well-known invader, the famous Pickle Devil Joe. Mm. Hunters will often see these two monsters locked in combat, Jesus. trying to prove which is the strongest and angriest. Good Lord. Although, according to the Monster Hunter World's Complete Works book, the guild considers them to be equal in strength. If explosive no chance. is no. what you <laughs> see... No chance. The guild is wrong. What do you... To the Monster Hunter World's Complete Works book, the guild considers them to be equal in strength. If I had a much better time. <laughs> Look, the Basil Goose got a little snippet in a video. Devil Joe beat my ass for eight hours and had his own video. I think Devil Joe's the more superior. I can't, I cannot see how, I get that they're both invaders and that's why, the sim, where the similarities are. But for the guild to say that they are of equal strength? No. No, no. No, I, I refuse to believe that. I can't believe that. There's no, it's impossible. The commission calls these bombs blasting scales or explosive scales, scientifically they would be considered glands. Mm. Glands are organs that produce substances or fluids which perform specific functions. The underside of Basilgi's body is actually covered in a large number of glands yeah. which secrete a unique fluid. This fluid hardens and expands the outermost layer of the gland's membrane, oh. transforming it into what the commission calls a blasting or explosive scale. As the Basilgees moves, these blasting scales will naturally fall off its body. This substance is continuously secreted, and even after blasting scales are dropped, reserves on Basil's body are replenished very quickly. I've never seen that. If the that. blasting scales are exposed to air for a certain period of time or hit by an outside force, they will explode. When engaging an enemy, Basilgees uses these bombs to its advantage. Since the Basil's main form of flying is gliding, I hate him. I hate it will him so much. over the enemy and show their vicinity with these explosive scales. Basil will then either descend straight into or charge into these blasting scales and detonating them with its own body. Horrible. One might think that Basil should be damaged by its own explosions, but it is actually protected from these impacts due to a thick shell and an extra layer of heat-resistant skin under its normal scales. Mm. In addition, while Basil is mostly relies Makes on sense. its body for detonation, it is not the only method it will use. Basilgees will occasionally breathe fire from its mouth to detonate its explosive scales. Exposure to extreme heat will cause the blasting scales to detonate in the same way that oxidation or strong shocks would. However, Basil does not use his fire breath very often since it does not have a flame sack. A flame sack, such as the one that Rathalos possesses, contains fine flammable particles that a monster uses as a constant source to expel flame but Basil only has an explosive gland within its mouth, and it uses that to create its fire breath. Basil's blasting scales and their properties change when the monster enters its red hot state. When Basil is enraged, the area around its scales has a bright red glow. Mm. As Basil's blood pressure rises in its enraged state, its body temperature does as well and creates this glow. Unlike most yes, monsters, Basil is not angry in the typical sense, 
but its enraged state is similar to receiving high adrenaline from battle. It is quite similar to the Saiyan race from Dragon Ball Z uh -huh. and the enjoyment they receive from fighting and beating their rivals or enemies. While in this red hot state, the monster's blasting scales are extremely unstable and explode immediately on impact with the ground. This state also causes Basil's metabolism to spike, which hastens the production of the fluid it needs to produce more blasting scales. This allows Basil to instantaneously replenish any depleted blasting scales. Its variant is the shiny boy, Seething Basil and it was introduced in Iceborne. Seething One of the most Basil. notable differences is Seething Basil is no longer Jesus. nomadic. It does not invade the other regions of the New World oh and stays God. remote in the Eldest Recess. In the events of Iceborne, the Commission investigates unusual seismic activity caused by Shara Ishvalda that is disrupting the ecosystem of the New World. Seething Basil's desire to remain in the Eldest Recess rather than invade other regions like its normal counterpart is most likely linked to this seismic activity. The other major difference is Seething's blasting scales. The hunter's notes explain that the blasting scales of Seething Basil burn hotter than normal, which can be seen on their bluish coloration. Jeez, they also have a wider it. explosion radius as time passes. Its body naturally produces a substance the commission calls distilled blast fluid, a material only dropped by Seething Basil in game. This fluid reacts to the monster's adrenaline and progressively causes the blasting scales to become more combustive the longer Seething Basil is in its enraged state. As this enhancement reaches its peak, the monster's explosive scales glow a bright purplish color rather than simply red. Since Basil's name is derived from the Battle Geese star, this new glow could be a direct reference to the origins of its name. As mentioned earlier, Battle Geese is a red supergiant star yes. and it glows a really red color. Holy but hell. the interesting detail which could be a reference to this monster is, the hotter and heavier a star is, the more blue it will be. Seething Basil's glow may be purplish since it's a mixture of red and blue heat and it is hotter and more explosive just like with heavier stars in the universe. The hottest and heaviest blue stars are the ones that live the shortest before they explode. The stars all across our universe work like nuclear fusion reactors. They create energy and heat by burning their fuel or elements and consuming gradually heavier and heavier elements until the last element is burnt. Once the heaviest element is consumed, the star will transition into a supernova. And all of these heavy elements are compiled in the middle of the star where it's the hottest temperature because they create more heat when used for fusion. Blue stars will burn through this fusion process much faster than red stars, hence why their lives are so short in comparison to stars like for example our sun. We call stars like our sun G-stars because they have a decent mass and nice. they are not too heavy and not this too This is very light. educational. There's no way that battle geese could ever reach an age of 4.6 billion years, <laughs> the one of our sun. All of this is really interesting and it could explain why the blasting blue scales of Seething Basil produce explosions around twice the size and power of normal red blasting scales. Because a blue star has more mass and ends up likely in a more devastating supernova explosion. Oh, also, editing Chris here, my newest research have found out that all of this of the more massive and more energy rich stars that have a shorter lifespan, basically they will explode faster but when they die, could be related to these blasting skills of Seething Basil if you notice that they also explode faster. So the normal basil blasting scales, they drop down on the ground and it takes some time for them to heat up to eventually explode. But the seething basil scales, they really explode really, really soon and fast. And they basically, they land on the ground. They're already glowing. So yet another reference to how stars are actually working and basil yes. just being this overall more massive, more hot, more wow. glowing monster, just like stars. Finally, Seething Basil has a new Nova attack where the monster will take to the sky, spread purplish blasting scales across the area and do a barrel roll before diving down to create a massive explosion. Oh good. This is exactly what stars oh, in the good. universe do before they explode. Very good. They also perform a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll! <laughs> no, that's a joke. <laughs> Ultimately, Basil and its Seething variant left quite a fiery impact on the world of Monster Hunter. It's impossible to deny how interesting their biology and relation to astrophysics really is. 
We hope you guys like this video. I Let did? us know down below which ones you would like to see next as we're slowly coming towards the end of the first season of our lore series. Again, if you would like to see this series continued, feel free to check out our Patreon page. And as always, we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Oh, oh, oh. well, ladies and gentlemen, that was very good. That was very, very good. Thank you, Team Darkside. Holy hell. That was a very good video. Extremely educational. I learned a lot there. I w I'm surprised how similar or how carved Basil Geese is to the star Beetle Geese. Or that Capcom and, you know, the Monster Hunter franchise took inspiration from it, especially in the design of Seafing Basil Geese. Um, I, I don't know if they, I don't think they said, but I don't know if it's confirmed in any of the books or anything like that. That that is what it's off of, but it has to be, right? And I mean, everything kind of points in that direction. The fact that Basil Geese is its name, um, the star is Beetle Geese, the glowing blue before going to a supernova, Seafing one has those scales, as um, Chris said. Amazing. Amazing. Well, guys, another amazing history or lore lesson. Very, lo very much loved it. Very much. Well, thank you so much for watching. Obviously, I don't need to tell all you guys. Go and check out Team Darkseid's channel. You're already subscribed. I know you are. I know. I get that. But if you're not, I would check it out because they're very good. Very, very good. Um, very, yeah, love the channel. Um, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you want to see lore-wise or history-wise maybe in our next class. And we'll get it done. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.